In the last couple of videos, we've had the opportunity to solve a couple problems from the mathematics of investment and credit where we had annuities that were inflation adjusted so that you did not get level payments over time, but you got geometrically increasing payments. We kept multiplying the previous payment by 1 plus R, where R is some growth rate, um, and trying to find the present values related to those kinds of things. And I advocated for remembering the formula for a the sum of a finite geometric series to help you solve those problems. In this video, I am actually going to say what the general formulas would be. We're going to derive some formulas that are on page 122 of Broverman that represent the present and future values of a sequence of n geometrically increasing payments. You don't necessarily have to memorize these things, but I thought it would be good to think about them, and you could memorize them if you want to. So it's not a problem, it's a derivation, so on page 122. Suppose we've got a series of n periodic payments, which could be per month or per year. The first payment amount of 1 and all subsequent payments, well, the first payment amount is 1, and all subsequent payments are 1 plus r times the previous payment, so the second payment would be 1 plus r, and the third payment would be 1 plus r quantity squared, and the fourth would be 1 plus r quantity cubed. i is the effective interest rate per payment period. Two things to do here. Show, first of all, that the present value of the sequence of payments, one period before the first payment, so it's really an annuity immediate, is given by this expression that you see here. And secondly, show that the accumulated or future value of the sequence of payments immediately after the pay final payment is given by this expression right there. Let's draw our number line, our timeline. Here's time zero, time one, time two, time three, etc. Up through time n, we've got n payments. The first payment at time one is one. We're going to be evaluating the present value one period before, so that'll be at time zero. The second payment is one plus r. The third payment is one plus r squared. The fourth is one plus r to the third, etc. You can see by the pattern that the last payment, the nth payment, will be one plus r to the n minus one. That's what the payments are. What about their present value? We can use v, the present value discount factor, it's 1 over 1 plus i. This payment of 1 needs to go back in time by 1 year, so it's 1 times v, or just v for the present value. The second payment of 1 plus r needs to be pulled back 2 periods, so it gets multiplied by v squared. The third payment of 1 plus r squared needs to be pulled back by 3 periods, so it's 1 plus r quantity squared times v cubed for its present value etc. The last payment of 1 plus r to the n minus 1 power goes back n periods, so it gets multiplied by v to the n. All right, and so what you see here is a geometric series, a finite geometric series with first term equal to v and common ratio equal to 1 plus r times v. So it's going to equal uh, the first term v times in parentheses 1 minus the common ratio raised to the power equal to the number of terms. There are n payments, so this is the nth power. All divided by 1 minus the common ratio, 1 minus 1 plus r times v. But remember, v is 1 over 1 plus i, so 1 plus r times v is the same as 1 plus r over 1 plus i. And we do want to get our final answer in terms of just r and i. Let's go ahead and make that substitution in here along with replacing v by 1 over 1 plus i. And we get this. Think about where you're trying to go. You're trying to get this thing here. Looks to me like I want to multiply the top and the bottom now by 1 plus i, which doesn't change the expression since it's just multiplying by 1. This will cancel with this, and when I distribute it through the bottom, it gets cancellation with the second term. This simplifies to 1 minus 1 plus r over 1 plus i to the n power over 1 plus i minus in parentheses 1 plus r, and that simplifies further to the final answer. 1 minus, in parentheses, 1 plus r over 1 plus i to the n power. The 1's cancel, and I'm left with an i minus r on the bottom.
right? So that's the present value. And yeah, this is a formula you could memorize if you want, though again, you don't have to. It's more useful in my mind to memorize the formula for the sum of a finite geometric series. What about the future value now? Well, the quick way to do it would be to say the future value is a time n immediately after the last payment is 1 plus i to the n power times the present value. We could go ahead and do it that way. So I multiply 1 plus i to the n times this thing. I distribute it through the top. I get 1 plus i to the n, and then it cancels with the 1 plus i to the n with this term here, and I'm left with 1 plus r to the n over i minus r. There's a quick derivation of the second formula. It also could be thought about thinking about it uh, in terms of a finite geometric series. Uh, for example, this 1 needs to get pushed forward to time n by multiplying it by 1 plus i to the n minus 1. The payment of 1 plus r at time 2 would be pushed forward by n minus 2 years. The payment of 1 plus r squared at time 3 needs to be pushed forward by n minus 3 years, <clears throat> etc. The last payment of 1 plus r to the n minus 1 doesn't need to move at all. And once again, thinking about the formula for the sum of a finite geometric series, the first term here is 1 plus i to the n minus 1. The common ratio is 1 plus r divided by 1 plus i. That needs to get raised to the power equal to the number of terms. Think about it here, there are n terms. And divide by 1 minus that common ratio, 1 plus r over 1 plus i. Once again, I can multiply the top and the bottom of this by 1 plus i. I'll get a 1 plus i to the n over here, and that can be distributed through, canceling with a 1 plus i to the n in the denominator there, leaving this. And then once again, I can also distribute the 1 plus i through the bottom to get this. Finally, the ones cancel once again, and I'm left with the same answer. And once again, this is a formula you could memorize if you want to probably don't need to. It's more important in my mind to memorize the formula for this uh, sum of a finite geometric series, but these are the answers, and if you want to memorize them, you can.